In this video, you're going to learn about Parcel. Parcel is a module bundler similar to tools like Webpack. Now, if you've worked with Webpack before, Parcel is going to serve as a fantastic replacement. If you've never heard of Webpack before, let alone worked with it, then you'll be able to learn about module bundlers for the first time. And I think you've picked a great place to start with Parcel. Before we go any further, my name is Andrew Mead from Mead.io and Udemy.com where I teach JavaScript, React, Node.js, and GraphQL. You can learn more about Parcel over at Parcel.js.org. We're going to spend just a couple of minutes over here, then we'll head into the Visual Studio Code Editor and we'll actually create a Parcel-based web application. Now, Parcel is indeed an application bundler. Here they say web application bundler, but it actually works really well on the back end with Node.js as well. Parcel is also zero configuration, so it actually comes with all of the stuff you'd expect, support for things like Babel, built right in. So unlike a tool like Webpack, where we have a Webpack config file, with Parcel, we don't have any of that. We can get up and running very quickly, as we'll see in just a few moments. Down below, we can learn a bit more about what exactly Parcel is going to allow us to do. Parcel is going to give us all of the tools we need to build complex web applications. It's going to allow us to bundle up our assets so we can take advantage of the import export module system. We're also going to be able to use files like SCSS files as well as TypeScript or Flow using their automatic transforms. We're going to have support for things like hot module replacement code splitting, tree shaking, error handling, source maps, and more. So in the end of the day, if you're writing JavaScript code, there's really no reason to not be using a tool like Parcel, whether it's Parcel or something else, because of all of the advantages it gives you. It really makes getting up and running and actually developing your application so much easier. Now, the documentation for Parcel is really fantastic as well. If you click over to that, you can learn about all of the stuff that Parcel can actually do. And in this video, we're just going to focus on getting up and running with a basic web application. We're not going to go through the docs together as that's the whole point of the video. So let's move into Visual Studio Code and actually get started. Now for this video, I've just created a parcel example folder on my desktop and I have that open in Visual Studio Code. Take a quick moment to set yourself up with a directory to use to build out this project. As I mentioned, the focus in this one is going to be on using Parcel to create a web application, so let's go ahead and get started. First up, we're going to be using npm to install Parcel, so I'll be setting up this project with a package.json file. Make sure you have Node and npm installed, and right here, I'm going to use npm init with the Y flag to automatically accept all of the default values for package.json. Now that we have our package.json file created, we can go ahead and install the only dependency we're going to need for the moment, which is the parcel-bundler module. That's npm install, parcel-bundler, this is where we get access to the parcel command. I'm going to go ahead and install that. And what we're going to do is create a very basic web application. I'm going to set up a directory. We're going to have an index.html file and an index.js file, just two files for the moment. That'll give us everything we need to get started. And we can add on more complexity as we learn more about Parcel. For now, though, let's go ahead and create a new folder in the root of our project. I'm going to call this one source. This will be our application source code. And in here, we'll create two files. One in the root of source index.html and another inside of a nested directory, which I'll call scripts. And I'll call that file right here, index.js. So we have the JavaScript code for our web app and we have our HTML code. Let's go ahead and actually add something to both of these files. In index.html, I'm going to type HTML colon five to use the HTML five boilerplate that Visual Studio Code provides. And all we're going to do is set up an H1 title tag as well as a script tag to load in our script. So right here, I'll set up an H1. This is my site. And then down below the H1, I'll set up a script tag. And we're just going to set the source attribute equal to a relative path. We want to point from this file to our index.js file. That would be dot forward slash. 
we have to go into the scripts folder, then forward slash index.js. Perfect. Now that we have this file all set up, all we're gonna do is add a couple lines of code inside of here. For the moment, let's actually just stick with one. I'm just going to console.log did this run to make sure that our application source code actually executes. As long as the basics are up and running, then we'll be able to explore all of the great features that Parcel provides. All right, down below, what are we gonna do? I'm going to use clear to clear the terminal output and we need to use a command provided by Parcel Bundler. Inside of package.json, we're gonna set this up as a script. You could always install Parcel Bundler as a global NPM module and run these commands right from the terminal. I like to keep things nice and contained though. So right here, I'm going to create a single script. The script name is going to be dev, and here we are going to use parcel, a command provided by our parcel bundler dependency. Now this command takes a single argument. It is the path to your index.html file. So from the root of the project where this file is located, that's gonna be source forward slash index.html. And there we go. This is zero configuration at its finest. We do indeed have a basic parcel project set up. Let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. Down below, I'm gonna use npm run dev to run that dev script. This is going to start up a server and right here we can see the parcel dev server is running at localhost 61989. I'm just gonna hold alt and click that link to bring that application up in the browser and here we have it. This is my site is showing up and if I crack open the Chrome developer tools, over in the console, I can also see our message. Did this run is printing, and that is a great first step. Now, at this point, we don't have much more than a simple server in use. We could get this functionality from a ton of much easier to work with tools. What's more interesting, though, is that Parcel now gave us a ton of features, so let's go ahead and start exploring them by working in index.js. This development server is going to give us all of the basics we would expect. So if I add a few more characters on and save the file, we're going to see those showing up in the browser before we can even switch over. The same thing is true with our HTML. I can add an exclamation mark on here, save it, and it shows up almost instantly. Next up, we're going to explore the module system that we get access to. So we can use the import export keywords to break up our JavaScript application into more than just one big file. Right here, to demonstrate this, we'll create a new script file. I'll call this something like utils.js. In here, we're going to define a utility function and export it. Then we'll import it from index.js and actually call it. So over here, a new const. We'll create a function called get full name. I'm going to assign the value of an arrow function. We'll take in a single argument called full name and we'll return just the first part of it. So right here, return. I'm gonna use full name dot split to break up the name by spaces. This is going to give us an array of those components back and I'll just access the first one in the array with the index of zero. Down below, we can now export it. I'm not gonna dive too deep into the details of the import export keyword, which are covered elsewhere, but right here, I will export it, adding it to my list inside of curly braces. Get full name, perfect. Now we can actually import the stuff from this file in our other application files. Right here, I'll remove our dummy console.log and replace that with an import statement. I'm gonna grab get full name, from the following file, we provide the relative path. So dot forward slash right there, utils. We can leave off the dot JS extension as that's used by default. Now we can call get full name. So I am going to create a const first name. I will then call get full name with my full name. So right here, the string Andrew space mead. And then finally, I'll just log out first name to make sure we get the correct result. So console.log first name, perfect. Now, if we go ahead and save things, I would expect to see Andrew over in the browser and that is exactly what we end up getting. So right here, we are indeed able to use import export like we would be able to do in a Webpack based application. 
Now we're also going to get access to source maps by default. So if I were to change something, let me just add a couple more characters on here. I'll toss an E on for good measure and go to the browser. You'll notice that by default, these source maps, they don't appear to be working down below next to Andrew. We have the source file. If I click it, what do I see? I see the converted code, not the code that we actually wrote. There's currently a known issue, or maybe it's more of just a way things work where source maps don't work on a live reload. If you do need source maps, all you got to do is just refresh the browser manually. Now we see index.js on line five. And if I click it, we can see exactly where things are coming from. This is indeed the code we wrote. So source maps are there. You just have to manually refresh the page in order to take advantage of them. By default, Parcel is indeed using Babel to transform your JavaScript code, making sure it works in a wide range of browsers, including older browsers that don't support features, things like the spread operator, arrow functions, and others. We can always customize our Babel configuration further to support things that we need. Maybe it's an experimental plugin, or maybe we need to support something like JSX if we're using React. Let's go ahead and see what it takes to customize the Babel configuration for our parcel project. To start, let's head over to babeljs.io and we'll talk about exactly what parcel is already doing. If we go over to the docs page, it is using the ENV preset. That is the standard generic preset that gives you almost all of the stuff you'd normally expect to have with Babel. Now we're already going to have this, so we don't have to reconfigure it, but we are going to configure a new plugin just to see what that process looks like. So right here under plugins, we have a long list of different plugins we can use. Many of these already supported because we're using that ENV preset. We're going to add an experimental one like the class properties feature, which actually isn't going to work unless we set this up. We can prove that by trying to use class properties real quick. Right here, I'm going to set up a class. I'll call this class name and we will set name the property equal to a value like anonymous by default. Now, if I save things, we can see that our application actually crashed. It doesn't know how to support the syntax that we've set up. Once we install and configure this plugin, we'll be back to a nice working application. Let's go ahead and do just that. I'm going to copy the plugins name to the clipboard. Down below, I'm going to shut down our server, run clear, and install it. npm install. I'll paste in the plugin that is Babel plugin proposal class properties. I'm going to install the module, and all we have to do is create a Babel configuration file and add that to the plugins list. So this is configuring Babel like we would if we were using just standalone Babel or Babel with Webpack or Babel in any other context. We set up our dot babel rc file in here. We have our JSON. Now, in this case, we are just trying to add support for a plugin. So I'll be setting up a single plugins property. The value for this is an array of strings, an array of plugins to use. And we only have one installed right here. I'm going to paste that name in once again. Now we have babel configured to use that ENV preset. That's done by default and to use the experimental class properties feature down below. I can use NPM run dev to start up that dev server. Once again, this time we can see we are not getting any sort of error messages and we can pull up our application in the browser. I'm going to do that by alt clicking right here. The application is still compiling. Sometimes on that first start, it takes a few seconds. And what do we get? We get a working app. So class properties is now supported. All we had to do was add the Babel RC file and set up what we wanted to configure. We could add other plugins and other presets to fit our application needs. Next up, let's talk about styling our applications with parcel. Sure. We could create a CSS file and then just link that in that would work. But what if we want to use something like SCSS? Let's see how we can set up support for that. Over in the source directory, I'm going to start by creating a new folder called styles. And this is where we could put all of our styles files. For now, we're going to add just a single one and I'll call that index.scss. And in here, we're going to create a variable and then we're going to use that variable. So let's define the variable primary color. Of course, using the dollar sign to prefix since we're defining a variable. 
I'll assign it the value blue. Then I'm going to make this text blue by selecting my H1 and setting the color property equal to the value of primary color. Perfect. So long story short, we're just creating a variable and using it as the color for our title. Now, if we were to save things, we're not going to see any change to the site because we aren't importing this file. Let's go ahead and fix that. To add support for SCSS, all we have to do is install a single module down below. I'm going to shut down the dev server and run npm install SAS. This gives us everything we need and parcel does the rest. There's no need to configure anything. All we have to do is install it. Once it's installed, we're going to be able to import files with that extension. So right here in index.js, I can add an import. We're not grabbing anything from the file, so we can leave off from along with the things we're grabbing. We can move right on to the file path. That's dot dot to get out of the scripts folder forward slash styles to go into that directory right there forward slash the file index dot s c s s perfect now we are actually importing our styles file and then here we are indeed using some s c s s specific functionality down below i'm going to clear the terminal output i'm going to start up the dev server again by running that dev script and once that's up and running we can crack open the site in the browser what do i get Right here, I do indeed have blue text showing up. So now we have a system for working with JavaScript, HTML, and our SCSS code. Now, as I change the content of this file, we're gonna see that things automatically update in the browser. So with all three content types, HTML, CSS, or JavaScript, we're gonna get the same live reload features. Now at this point, you'll notice we also have a dist directory in our project root that we never created. This contains the compiled output. So here we have our JavaScript file, the source map file, our CSS file, and our HTML file. Now, obviously the dev server is indeed creating this dist directory, but we can also create our own production script so we can go ahead and get a production build of our application whenever we actually need it. Down below, let's go ahead and add a second script right here. I'm going to call this one build or something similar to that. And here we are going to use parcel build. The parcel build command builds out our application and all we have to do once again is provide that input path. So source forward slash index dot HTML. Now by default, it's gonna dump the content in the dist directory. We already have a dist directory. You could always change that by going ahead and providing hyphen hyphen out hyphen dir. So the out directory argument is going to allow you to customize this folder name and we could go ahead and change it to something like prod for production. Now let's go ahead and save package.json and test things out. Down below, I'm going to shut down that dev server. I'm going to use npm run build to generate a build of our application. It's running through that process right now and we can see the prod directory has already been created. Right here, what do we have? We have a production build of our application. We can take these assets, put them on a web server and have our app up and running. This is the compiled code with source maps included. So we can use the dev script when we're developing locally and iterating on our application. We can use the build script when we're ready to get a final build that we can put on a real web server. The files inside of the prod folder, they're also minified for development. So right here we can see our minified JavaScript code inside of our a CSS file. We have the exact same thing. We have our compiled minified code. So there's no need to really do much for the production build. This is all part of that zero configuration nature of parcel. That's where I'm going to stop for this quick introduction to Parcel and how you can use Parcel to build out a web application. We now have a nice little setup that we could continue to expand on building out our apps. This should also open you up to the rest of the features that Parcel supports. For example, if you go over to the documentation and you go to recipes, you can learn how to use Parcel with a React application, Vue, and a few other alts. There's also more information on how to customize even more features. And now that you know the basics of Parcel, you should be able to navigate the docs with a sense of familiarity. 
All right, that is it for this one. I'm Andrew Mead from Mead.io. As always, feel free to check me out there and subscribe to the newsletter or check out my courses on Udemy.com. I'll see you in the next one.